Welcome to The Rebel Rebel. It's a podcast for creative rebels and entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Michael Dargy. In every episode, we look for truly unique and interesting guests who have said, often literally, f*** it to the status quo and have just gone on their own way. One thing's for sure is that it's never easy, it's always challenging, and these rebels wouldn't have it any other way. Look for the links to everything we talk about in the show notes on our website at therebelrebelpodcast.com. Welcome to the Rebel Rebel. We're back in Sea Space with the Sea Space sessions, and sitting across me at a very safe distance is Maxim Beauregard. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? <laughs> also so good. Um, we're so we're totally masked. Yes. Um, everything's been sanitized for your protection uh, <laughs> yes. and our listeners' protection. <laughs> <laughs> and your protection and as my well. protection that's right yeah we're all protected all of us uh we're high aloft uh the sea space uh king edward in studio 415 which is a super cool place and maxim helps run this place yeah i'm the facility administrator of sea space projects nice and so glad to be a part of this community oh that's great well yeah. so let's dig in like uh okay i have so many questions yes answer them in any order you like uh what brought you here? Uh, what kept you here? Um, what's going to happen next? Uh, what's the coolest thing that you do? Uh, give me all those things. Wow. Oh, so much content <laughs> for this. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'd say I'll start with the first one that you said, which was what brought you here, yeah. which is actually a very long answer in itself. But basically, life brought me here. There's just some stuff that life has its way sometimes of doing things very in a very great way yeah. and things just align for me. So prior to sea space, I was actually a nomad traveler for two years and things aligned so well for me in Calgary. I actually, I was a nomad traveler. I had a time where I came back to my parents' place for a bit yeah. and I had a calling from my gut feeling that was telling me to go to Calgary. And I didn't know why I had never Stayed in Calgary and what? I didn't like know any family members here or had like specific friends that I had here. I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to go to Calgary. Oh, my God. And I was already a nomad. So I just followed my gut yeah. and I came here and I was like, why? Why? There's like I didn't see anything. But the thing here about Calgary is you have to find the people. Yeah. You have to find the things. So I did my research and then I found this amazing community oh. of like one sea space which yeah. when i found that i was like wow that aligns super well with my values and what yeah. i am in my personal life yeah. i would love to work for this amazing community that aligns with me yeah and then i also found an amazing community with drag yeah. which aligns with my gender identity so i'm trans non-binary and just having this community this full community that accepted me and just, oh, that's great. Yeah, it brought me in. So that's what kept me here. Everything aligned at the right place at the right moment. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm a nomad, but that's where I'm meant to be for, for now in this very moment. Right. So I decided to settle down. And that's what kept me here. Whoa. OK, so talk to me about being a nomad, because that is a cool title. <laughs> <laughs> well, being a nomad, I was a nomad for two years. So basically what that means is I didn't have any home or lease or a place that I was keeping yeah. in one spot. My home was my luggage and my community. Wow. So basically anywhere that I felt like I found community and that yeah. I had my backpack with me, I called home. Wow. So home for me really shifted where it's not a physical space. Yeah. It's more um, where you feel like you belong yeah. and you feel like you're at the right place. So that's what I did. I also... Did not stay in the same spot more than, I'd say the longest that I've been was like two months in the same spot. Really? But uh, on an average, I would shift spaces every week or two. Yeah. And just see the world. Wow. Okay. And, so what, yeah. are the, what are the places that you've been to? Like Mostly Canada, to be honest. Canada's huge. Don't, Canada don't diminish is that. very, there's, very there's huge. There's places to see. <laughs> yes. So East Coast, West Coast, yeah. North, South. Uh, I've also been to Costa Rica, Colombia. United States, wow. Mexico. Um, yeah, so mainly uh, the American continent. Yeah. I've been abroad before when I was younger. Yeah. But that was more of my nomad gotcha. places that I went to. And I was 
looking to go to Europe next, to go to Germany next, but life happened ah. and I settled down <laughs> in Calgary. <laughs> wow. So, uh, and you know, feel free to answer this any way that you like, but yeah. what, cause you're fairly young. Yes. Right. Or at least you're timeless. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, definitely. I like the way you put it. <laughs> um, how, like, what is it that was in you that you're just like, you know what, I'm just going to go travel and, you know, see North America as, as my home. Like that to me is super interesting. And I'm wondering how you came to decide that and what it was like for you to take those first steps away. Definitely. Uh, two things I'd say. First thing is all my life, I've always followed my gut. And from a very young age, when I was 15 years old, I left home yeah. to follow my gut to pursue my love for dancing. So being in a space where everything is, is shifting and adapting yeah. was part of how I was brought up with following my gut. Okay. And so that was a thing where when I realized in my life where I was at the time, I was a stage manager, I was a, a costume technician for a dance company, and I had all of these contracts lining up and I was really good at what I was doing, but yeah. I wasn't happy. Okay. And when I realized that, I was like, well, what what would make me happy? And I kind of went around this idea and thought, and then my mom came in. Bless her. She's awesome. Um, <laughs> and then she told me, if you had a magic wand and I gave it to you right now, what's the first thing that would come to mind that would make you you? And yeah. I was like, traveling. And I was like, oh, wow. OK, and that's what I need to do. Huh. So I. Oh, wow. I refused every contract that I had lined up for me for the next half year. Yeah. And I had some money that I had saved up yeah. with my contracts and I just left to follow my gut and follow my heart that it was telling me to learn to do video editing and start doing my YouTube channel, start doing Instagram and start being an activist and a voice for trans and non-binary folks, but also for the nom nomad life and wow. just do all of that. So I left for traveling, but really it was not the vacation traveling. It was yeah. the nomad lifestyle. So I was in other places but I was still living yeah. like it wasn't a vacation time. Okay. So yeah, I, I kept learning online how to do video editing, which taught me very good lessons for COVID, which I needed for <laughs> drag performance <laughs> online. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nothing happens for nothing. Everything happens for a thing. So yeah. it was great. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. So, uh, okay. All right. So let's, let's talk about the drag yeah. uh, performing. Um, and I had the privilege of being here one night and it, was it, maybe it was your first COVID drag performance, but maybe it wasn't. It was my first live one. Live one. Yes. Yeah. So, and you did it up here on the fourth floor yeah. and the transformation of, uh, of you into your, it, I don't even know how to, is it your alter self? Is it your other self? Yeah, it's like how my drag that? king persona. Okay. Yeah. Which, uh, my drag king persona is called Alec Ginger Band, Alec with a, a K. Yeah. And yeah, the transformation is, is great. Well, <laughs> it's, amazing. Well, it's, it's, it's shocking. <laughs> it was like, Oh, that's Maxim. Yeah. yeah. Makeup but, but it's not. It's wonders. Not yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Very and also cool. costuming, which drag is an amazing form of art because it kind of took everything that I was passionate about and made it one. So yeah. basically like costuming and then dancing. I studied as a professional contemporary dancer. Wow. So I didn't have to think about choreography. I could just dance and right. do my number and, and do a concept and an artistic form that would reach out to the gen the general public, but also yeah. to the community that I'm in with trans folks and non-binary folks yeah. and just use this art form to give a message and, and, yeah, do do good in the world. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and I'm sorry, is it like, is it a persona? Is it a character? Is it like, what? what is that? Uh, Just because I don't understand it and I'd like to know. Yeah, definitely. I think for different folks, it is different things. Okay. For me, it's, uh, as I know with the English language, because English is not my first language. Yeah. Uh, I'd say I've always called Alec my Jacking persona. Okay. 
Uh, I definitely say that it's a part of me that was there before yeah. and that going on stage and exploring more my art uh, made me accept myself better nice. with things that I would not necessarily feel comfortable with. So right. that was fantastic. So yeah, Alec is my drag king persona, which is also part of Maxim. So Gotcha. Yeah. And is, uh, now, do you have other personas or is it just the one? I have other personas. Okay. I have my drag queen persona, which... Rarely does appearances, but does sometimes, uh, which she is called Kayla. Her full name is Kaylin Binaries. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. Nice. Uh, and I also have another one, which is blended a little bit with Alec. I don't publicly say it um, out loud, but uh, I have my other yeah. uh, drag monarch persona. Monarch, okay. which is uh, not a king or a queen. It's kind of a gender Gender, gen, yeah, gender yeah. non-conforming drag, basically. Nice. Okay. And I, I called them Xavier, but I never like publicly say that it's Xavier. I just put it under Alec. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then it's just gender bendy. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, do you have many shows coming up? I don't for now. Yeah. Uh, I was really, really busy for COVID <laughs> during yeah. COVID, and then I was like, I need a break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we all deserve a break. So yeah. what I have coming up, I have Calgary Pride. I right. have a number that was accepted for Calgary Pride in September. So that's really exciting. Amazing. And then I'm preparing for Alberta's next drag superstar, depending on what happens with COVID. I'd really wow. like to enter the co the competition. And when so is that? That would be if everything clears up with yeah. COVID. That would probably be February 2021. Wow. There are many stages to it, and many yeah. looks and many numbers to do. Um, and so I thought I would prepare in advance. Yeah. To be sure that I give everything that I have. So I really want to be up there for like costuming and yeah. and props and concepts and i just want to give my all so i'm like yeah i need to prepare in advance i can't do that two weeks before the show no oh my goodness <laughs> yeah wow yeah oh, holy okay so, really so you, got, you got some plans i do but they're not like <laughs> coming up pretty quickly except for Kyrie pride yeah, yeah. Well, but it's great. a long-term project yeah, yeah, well, good. It's or it's one of those projects that you know doesn't end. Kind of definitely, really. and there are like six different looks that I want to do wow. cons costuming. And actually, fun fact, I can't start costuming right away, so I'm kind of like doing it. Yeah. Around because good news, da da da. da, -da. I am starting testosterone oh for my, my transition, gosh. so my body's gonna change, which oh, means second that, puberty. Yeah. <laughs> also means that I can't start costuming right yeah. away because my body's gonna change. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's something also to unpack. Yeah. Um, man, that's a that's a huge change. It's a huge change. Um, okay. So so many questions. Are you nervous? I am. I think everyone would be. One hundred percent. There's a lot yeah. that gets impacted, but oh, for it's sure. a it's a good nervous. I mean, like people can also perform and be nervous, but then right. there's the nervous that makes you sick, and then the nervous that gives you butterflies. Yeah. And that's the one. Yeah. You, you got the butterfly one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. So obviously not something that you just decided to jump into. No. You, you've taken some time to sort of figure this out. And uh, and I, because I know very little about that um, at all, I'd love to I'd love to learn more. Definitely. Well, uh, this journey has been with testosterone, at least it's been a two year journey for me. Yeah. And because I'm not a trans man, I'm trans non-binary, which okay. means I don't identify as a woman. I don't identify as a man. Okay. Uh, I am outside of the binary genders basically. Yeah, okay. And so for me, it's the journey with testosterone. The journey with testosterone for everyone will be different. Yeah. For me, what happened is because I'm non-binary, uh, it's kind of a more ambivalent choice because okay. if you're if you transition with testosterone, there are options, yeah. but basically you're transitioning to look more like the opposite gender that you were born with. Right. And so being non-binary, it brings kind of oh. am, like ambivalent gotcha. um, pros and cons because I'm not a trans man. Yeah. Um, but also I am a traveler, which is another layer to the transition that is oh. huge for me yeah. because safety is very important. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just went back and forth and was like, I really want to travel. I want to keep not having to 
have to make compromises for traveling. Okay. But then being transgender brings in another layer that oh. is very complicated for safety because right. there are a lot of countries that um, there are still, it's still illegal to be 2S LGBTQIA plus. Oh, man. Uh, you can be murdered. Oh, you can geez. be beaten up. You can be put in jail. Uh, so oh, oh. <laughs> sorry to say all of that, but also no. not sorry because these are realities that I have yeah. to live in. Yeah. Um, and traveling, I need to make sure that I go to a country that I'm safe. Yeah. But I also am an adventurer. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to be limited to only first world countries. Yeah. I want to see the world. I want to touch lives in all communities. I just, I don't want to be limited to the communities that I meet and that I right. experience. So for that, looking androgynous, which is possible if you take tea, you can stop, you can, uh, uh, there are things that are reversible, things that are not. Gotcha. And so you can look more androgynous, but it does make you more um, visible as a trans person, which is totally okay yeah. and totally valid because yeah. all trans bodies are valid, m whether they transition or not, or yeah. are in the middle. But for me as a traveler, what it meant is my safety would be at risk if I was publicly seen as transgender. Gotcha. And so I decided to take testosterone, but that for me, I've decided to go towards looking like a man yeah. uh, fully just for my safety. But then okay. again, ambivalence with being non-binary where oh. I had to make peace with that and okay. um, yeah, accept that. Wow. So that's been a journey. No a two-year journey. <laughs> that is a there's yeah. a lot to um try to understand about yourself and then yeah. figure out how to navigate those waters. Cause, Definitely. Because uh, we live in a society that sees a lot of the binaries and yeah. it's very hard to live between as possible. Yeah, I guess. But it's uh yeah, it's it's very challenging. So I had to unfortunately make compromises to fit in a society that um, might not be ready yet for inclusion right. and diversity in every parts of the world. Well, and I get, you know, the hope of course, is that eventually we get there. Yes. Right. Yes. That and I wish that for the next generation. And that's why I'm publicly out as transgender oh, and non-binary and why I do so much activism and, and with my YouTube channel, I, I want to reach out to those folks and I want more representation yeah. in the media so that it becomes normal normalized and it becomes a part of the society right that so we're part diverse of the yeah. fabric of our community definitely yeah. so if i can give that to the next generation it's gonna be worth it nicely done yeah <laughs> uh, uh what's your youtube channel i'll put that in the notes but... yes my youtube channel is nomad outside the box <laughs> <laughs> nice yes originally i wanted to do that channel for my nomad lifestyle yeah. and traveling but as i grew in my most authentic self and as I grew as a person, I realized that I wanted it to be more than that. And at the time, I wasn't ready yet to be publicly um, talking for the transgender and yeah, binary sure. community. It was a very scary thing to be yeah. publicly known and seen sure. like that. But at one point, I realized that it was a calling for me to be an educator for uh, digitally and also to yeah. bring my voice to the public. So I decided to make that channel into everything that's outside the box in my life, which is basically everything. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So box more, what box? More broad, yeah. but it will touch many other subjects, yeah. including my the gender that I am in and the transition and yeah. Yeah, so many things that I want to talk about. No plastic lifestyle, just a, a oh. lot of things that I want to share with the world. Did you say no plastic lifestyle? Yes. Oh, and it's okay. So hard. It's like it's just like nuggets of cool that just <laughs> come out of your mouth. All right. So what is no plastic lifestyle? I like it. Yeah. So no plastic lifestyle is basically to live a life where you don't buy or consume plastic that will then be in the world and plastic totally. is very very hard even yeah. though there's recycling with the world that we live in there's kind of like overproduction and, yeah. and problems with not being able to uh, bring the recycling to china anymore anyway yeah. a lot of things and so 
also with C space, I realized that there are some things that are being recycled in Calgary mm. that are supposed to go to the recycling facility, yeah. but that goes to actually the um, uh, landfill. Is, landfill. Oh, yes. And that's very scary. Yeah. Because then I started looking into everything that I would consume and I was like, wow, I do a lot of waste that will take years and years and generation after me that still be will be intact. Wow. <laughs> and that kind of struck me where I was like, I don't want to be doing all of this waste yeah. in a planet that will be should be there for other generations. Yeah. And so I decided, how can I reduce that? And the biggest impact you can do is not to recycle, but to either reuse yeah. or to reduce. And so I decided to go for the no plastic lifestyle. I started, I think when I was 20, 23, I'm 26 now. And I, my goal was to, it was a long-term goal because it's just very overwhelming if you yeah. just stop everything and at sure. once. Yeah. So my goal was by the time I'm 30 to stop wow. having plastic in my life. So every time I finish something, <laughs> I find a way to turn it a different way or do it oh, nice. uh, by myself or do a recipe or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a journey. Oh, very good. Yeah. That's all so inspiring. I'm totally hiding my Tupperware filled <laughs> with lunch right now. It's all good. It's all good because there are things that we already own and yeah. it's just to find them a second life and yeah. to use them as, as much as we can. Right. right. So we don't have to be ashamed of the person that we are or we used to be. We yeah. we can just make sure that once we know something, we can take baby steps and actions to do better. Yeah. So yeah. I love it. That is such a lovely sentiment. Yeah. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Wow. Um, <laughs> this is so great. What are, and I know that you're a very studious person. It, 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 I know, How? I, <laughs> I know this because we were talking sort of before the show and I'm just like, well, you know, I might ask you this. I might ask you that. Uh -huh. And of course he went and did homework. Oh, <laughs> so I like to be prepared. <laughs> yeah. What are the five things that everybody needs to know? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'd say the first thing is if you want to take a decision, there are many things that are going to talk to you. So there's going to be your head, your heart, and your gut. And the head and the heart are very loud usually. Yeah. It's really hard to hear what your gut is telling you. Yeah. And I found a way that works for me, might not work for everyone, but I want to share that, yeah. is to know what your gut is telling you. What I tell myself is, if I was to die tomorrow, would I regret not doing the thing? Right. And putting myself in a situation that's black and white in a world that right now is, it's great. There's yep. just like so many layers. Yep. If you put yourself in a situation that's black and white, your gut's going to come forward and do like, yes, I'm going to regret this. And if your answer is, yes, I'm going to regret not taking that decision. Yeah. Then for me, I do it. Right. Even if it's how, scary. Even if it's scary. Yeah. Because you're. I believe that your gut knows best I love what's it. best for you. Yeah. Awesome. All right, that's my two. first one. Number two is I've heard someone, I can't remember who I've heard it from. If someone knows, please let me know. Yeah. But I heard someone say that if everyone started to talk to their friends, the way they talk to themselves, most people would lose their friends. Oh, and that's a very interesting thought that sparked a conversation with myself where I was like, yeah, talking to yourself in a way that's as important as if you were your own friend yeah. is very, very important. So I'd say my second advice yeah. is to be mindful of your self-talk and to start seeing yourself as a friend. Oh. Yeah, that's my Gosh. second advice. Okay, <laughs> love it. Third advice yeah. is to do your research. If <laughs> Yes. Yes. Because if you have an idea or a thought or something you want to know, mm -hmm. research is such a huge tool that can advance you forward in life. Right. And also to listen to the lived experience of folks, because even though there's so much research that can be made, yeah. sometimes there's lived experience that are not necessarily transcript. And so it's very important to listen to folks that are different yeah. than you to 
learn and grow as a person. Uh, so that's my third advice. Wow. <laughs> and then the fourth advice is the law of attraction. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know about the law of attraction, I hugely, hugely encourage to <laughs> search about it because yeah. it's in the world and to know about it, then you can use it to your advantage. Nice. And so if you have something that you want to achieve or a goal in life, really visualize it and not just visualizing it, but believing in it and have having faith in where you want to go in yeah. life. And then once you know that, let go of how you're going to get there because life's going to take care of that. Yeah. And just like if you think about something in your life that you've had or you you've wanted and it happened yeah and try to track down how it happened yeah. and i can guarantee you that you would have <laughs> never figured out how it would have happened because yeah. life has its way of making it happen yeah uh, so that's the fourth advice Love it. and linked to that with the fifth advice is um to be aware and to be open to opportunities that life's going to bring in your life because once you left you've let go of how you're going to get to where you want to be. Yeah. Life's going to throw you some things and you have to be open to it and then take it when your gut tells you to take it. So again, yeah. brings back to the first advice. Yeah. Listen to your gut. There's an opportunity coming in from life. Yeah. If you're going to regret it, take it, do it. <laughs> life is going to bring half halfway of where you want to be and yeah. then you have to take action to complete it and do the second half. Love it. So that's wow. my five advice. That is wicked. Those are so good. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Wow. Uh, favorite movie of all time. Rapid fire. Oh my God. Uh, um, <laughs> it's not a movie. It's a TV show. Sense8. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, favorite book. Oh my God. Wow. I'm not a book reader. Okay. Um, hmm. Favorite magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Newspaper. <laughs> Website. <laughs> Damn, YouTube I'm not good channel. At YouTube channel. Trans in transit. Oh, there you go. <laughs> We'd find it and know it. Uh, if uh, if you could hang out with any non-fictional or fictional character, who would it be? Non-fictional or fictional character, who would it be? Yeah, do you anybody real oh. or imagined? Oh, I'd say if I could go back and like Martin Luther King because there's just so many history but I, I would like to know his perspective yeah. on his side yeah. wonderful yeah. Oh, that'd be time well spent yeah that's great um, your favorite piece of art oh something that comes from the heart excellent yeah wow uh, do you have a favorite song It changes with my mood. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, I mean, and here's the thing, like, you know, I ask these rapid fire questions just to, you know, what's top of mind, right? Yeah. But the reality is, is that like favorite in what context? Favorite in, you mm -hmm. know. Definitely. I just like putting up guardrails and see what happens Definitely. as we bang off of them. Also, fun fact. Yeah. I have a particular brain where I'm a kinesthetic person, so I'm yeah. not a visual or auditive person. So I am, I can be. Um, a person that doesn't have any thoughts. Oh, lovely. And so right now, as we talk, <laughs> hey. I see you yeah. and I don't have any thought. That's why rapid fire is really hard for me because I need to like, oh, right. I need oh, to yeah. have thoughts yeah. like, coming oh, in and check, there's check, like check. nothing. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's a fun fact about myself. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> it can be pros and cons. Yeah, right? sure. Right. Yeah. I, I hear a lot of people that are like, oh, I have so many things on my mind. I'm like, I am very <laughs> grateful that I don't have anything. I didn't know that was a thing. Cause the funny is. part is, is that I end up in that same place trying to justify why I'm just experiencing what I'm experiencing and not really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I need to do more research on that. Hmm. Great. But then with rapid fire and quick responses, it's, uh, it's a very con because yeah. it's, it's filed away and I uh, need to go, go Ac open it up. Yeah. Access the system. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. What is your next big adventure? I mean, I know the testosterone is coming. That's an adventure. Yes. I know that you're going to be going for 
uh, the show in February, if it's still going. Yeah. Alberta's next drag superstar. It, yeah. What, mm-hmm. what, what happens? Like, where do you see Maxim, you know, a year or two years down the road? Oh, wow. Well, for drag, cause there's so many layers to my life, right? Yeah, sure. For drag, I would love uh, to do Alberta's next, next drag superstar, but also yeah. perform across Canada, depending on COVID, yeah. obviously, but I'd really love eventually to perform across Canada and, um, eventually perform in many prides in the world. Nice. That's a uh, even longer term than a year. Yeah. And then for my YouTube channel, I started doing videos again after a huge hiatus. Yeah. But it's to collect my transition and and share with the world and share my thoughts and and yeah, be a an activist and Great. and help people. So that's what the channel. And then with C Space, I'd say. Diversity, inclusion, and accessibility is very important for me personally. Yeah. And it's something that is very present as well in the mission, vision to provide a space that is diverse and inclusive and accessible. Yeah. But uh, since it's so important for me, I kind of want to bring it as an awareness and bring action to really putting it in the forefront. Yeah. If possible, of course but following the mission so that we actively take action to make it diverse, accessible and inclusive wow. uh, because the community is awesome. I right? love C-Space. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. It's so good. Um, it, and I don't know whether we cover this or not, but maybe I just want to maybe end on this is how, how did you connect with C-Space? Like what is it that sort of brought you here? Um, and then how did you turn it into this opportunity you currently have? Huh. Um, a friend of mine, I was looking for work and a friend of mine knew about C-Space and pointed me in that direction. Yeah. And, uh, actually her brother worked here before. Okay. Just like so many layers. <laughs> right. Her brother and I were in the same practicum in Banff two years earlier. It was just like oh, so many things. Just, connect, connect, connect. Yeah, life just makes it way. Yeah. Makes its way. And I emailed C Space and I was like, hey, I'd like to know more and apply for a job. Yeah. And they were like, we don't have any position for full time, but let's have an interview. I met with Dieter. It connected really well. And Dieter was like, you know what? We don't have a full time position, but yeah. I'd like to like onboard you. So let's have you as a part time staff. Had some changes happening with the administration, yeah. the event platform at the time. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I can do that. And then uh, it just grew and grew and grew. And then I became the facility administrator. Just life Amazing. put the pieces together. Yeah. Uh, I love how that all just comes together just because it's, you get in the way of opportunity, right? Yeah. Yeah, huh. definitely. This has been an outstanding episode. <laughs> thank um, you so much for having me. You, oh, thank you for coming. I've learned so much about you. I've learned so much about your community. I've learned so much about myself, uh, just in you know your ideas and thoughts. I just, I feel so grateful to have had you here. Oh, I'm so grateful <laughs> that you brought me here. And also I'm really happy that this is what you are bringing with you because that's, that's the goal in the end, right? Making yeah, a difference. Absolutely. You can find out more about every one of our guests in the show notes at therebelrebelpodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe to The Rebel Rebel wherever you get your favorite podcasts. I'm your host, Michael Dargie. Thank you so much for listening. 